Hi brothers and sisters, this is the day that the Lord has made. Are you feeling the perfect love yet? Let's continue on with Songs of Solomon, chapter 4. Behold, thou art fair, my love, behold, thou art fair. Thou hast dove's eyes within thy locks, and thy hair is as a flock of goats that appear from Mount Gilead. Now the Lord echoes back to woman wisdom what she had previously said to him. In doing so, they are declaring they both recognize they are one, hence... He is telling her that she has dove's eyes. She is now seeing with his spirit through his eyes. His eyes are in her. Son, I'm sorry, I'll just say son because it's easier for me. Son for two, they teeth are like a flock of sheep that are even shorn, which came up from the washing, whereof everyone bear twins and none is barren among them. Your teeth are like a flock of sheep even shorn. He is referring to the plucking out and filing of these false wisdom teeth. Many Christians have dreams of losing their teeth, yeah? That is the plucking out of false knowledge and they are replaced with perfect wisdom. Hence they come up from the washing. Her brain has been washed clean. Everyone beareth twins. Aha! How many of you are familiar with the double portion theme in the scripture? Rachel's, as opposed to the Leah's, birth forth twins with every conception. These are believers. They are, pa they are pairs every time. They bear forth, these women, when they're open, Adams and Eves. They change a woman at a time, which automatically awakens her twin companion also. Why? Because in the spirit they are one. When the New Testament talks about when it's all said and done, there'll be no marriage. The reason that is, is because you're already married. Okay? In the spirit, before you were even born in a physical body, you were a spirit. Right? You knew God before you were put into a physical body. And in that spirit, there was a man and a woman portion that were one spirit. And when they came into the earth, the atom was split. Okay? It split the atom. And the rib came out of him. And then you had an Adam and an Eve. Right? So, what these women can do when they're opened with the key of David that comes in their man is... That then produces the ability to teach and affect people in a way where they are bringing forth twin pairs every time they speak. Okay? Sons 4.3 Thy lips are like a thread of scarlet, and thy speech is comely, and thy temples are like a piece of pomegranate within thy locks. Okay? Thy lips are like a thread of scarlet. Where have we seen that before? Genesis 38.28 is the first example. And it came to pass when she travailed, that one put out his hand, and the midwife took and bound upon his hand a scarlet thread, saying, This came out first. It is again an arrow pointing directly to the birth of the first set of twins from a matriarch's womb. The speech is comely. Now, I need you to understand, brothers and sisters, this doesn't mean that the woman and women have learned to speak in a tone that is acceptable to society and with the vernacular of a saint. No. It is comely because it is the truth. And those with the ears to hear the truth, hear it and are attracted to the Lord through her speech. Thy temples beneath the hair re resembling pomegranates. Ignore my spelling mistakes because the Lord doesn't give a crap about that stuff, okay? This is coming out of me, flowing very fast, and he doesn't want me worrying about that stuff. Thy temples beneath the hair resembling pomegranates. This is because a pomegranate has bountiful fruit. And her mind, the mind of Christ, which is, is what it is, has the ability to activate the frontal cortex of all people's brains. She has the abundance of wisdom that can deliver the mind of Christ in an exponential way that can pierce the hearts and frontal cortex or temples of all different types of people. The pomegranate seeds need to be banged out in a particular kind of way, yeah? Well, she knows how to bang everyone's, every different type of people's brain so that those, those, the fruits of the Spirit come out of them. Songs 4.4 Thy neck is like a tower of David, builded for an armory, whereon there hang a thousand bucklers, all shields of mighty men. Her neck has endured many, many yokings and sufferings, and stood the testing and endured. The thousand bucklers, all shields of mighty men, and mighty men refer to the fallen angels, okay? Uh, actually, it's double, double double meaning but for now we'll just say the mighty men um the mighty men as referred to in the book of enoch etc okay or the book of jasha and stuff like that are those fallen thoughts so the thousand bucklers and all shields of mighty men that have been around her neck 
are those fallen forethoughts of self-willed ones that have tried to bind her and her neck stood the test of time okay songs are uh, four five two the two breasts are like two young rows that are twins which feedeth among the lilies there is a double meaning in this line but for now i'm permitted to only say that this is a term for of a term of endearment you know like a row a deer uh, a female deer um that the breasts are like two rows that feed among the lilies the lilies representing the blossoming and awakened heart or hearts of the daughters although he spoke to spoke to one woman here within her heart lies the hearts of all the daughters hence the plural lilies and not a singular lily sun four six until the day break and the shadows flee away i will get me to the mountain of myrrh until the hill of frankincense so this is her right until the daybreak, another reference to the day of the Lord, and the shadows flee away. All the superimpositions and all the demonic shadows. I will get me to the Lord, to the Frank and Myrrh, as I explained previously in other videos. Songs 4 7. Thou art fair, my love. There is no spot in thee. So now he's talking again. He says, There's no spot in thee. She's been made ready. Now, where have we seen that before? The example the Lord wanted me to use here is 2 Peter 3 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may found of him in peace without spot and blameless. She has been made spotless <coughs> by him. So, son for eight. Come with me from Lebanon, my spouse, with me from Lebanon, and look from the top of Amana, and from the top of Shina and Hermon, and from the lion's den, and from the mountains of the leopards. Okay? Mountains generally in the Bible represent powers and principalities. But to keep it simple, this is an invitation for her now ready to come up and join the Lord above the powers of principalities, control and dominion. Out of speculative, speculative experience and judgment. Son 4, 9. Thou hast ravished my heart, my sister, my spouse. Thou hast ravished my heart with one of thine eyes, with one chain of thy neck. One eye, the eye of Christ mirroring back to him his abundant love and will and one chain on the neck his reins of righteousness and all the other yokes have been removed son 410 how fair is my love my sister my spouse how much better is thy love than wine and the smell of thine ointments than all spices a love better than wine because wine is a mind altering drug yes but his love echo back through her and back to him as praise and worship is as a sweet wine of favor it is intoxicating yet it's not mind altering it's mind enhancing and mind amplifying. Sun 411. Thy lips, O my spouse, drop as the honeycomb. Honey and milk are under thy tongue, and the smell of thy ointments is like the smell of Lebanon. This is an arrow directly to John the Baptist, who supped on locusts and honey, but there's more than that. Let us look at honeycomb. 1 Samuel 1427. But Jonathan heard, not when his father charged the people with the oath, wherefore he put forth the end of the rod that was in his hand and dipped it with a honeycomb and put his hand to his mouth and his eyes were enlightened so when he's talking about the fact that she's like honeycomb it is an arrow straight to this verse so that you can understand that her eyes were enlightened but she's not enlightened as in going and seeking enlightenment in some new age fantasy land and trying to usurp the lord she's found this enlightenment in christ in christ's eyes in christ's view of the world in christ's in, you know the, the reality of Jesus Christ and the the mind of Christ has been put on her which has given her the eyes of enlightenment because she now sees the world with his eyes Psalm 1910 more to be desired are they than gold ye than much fine gold sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb so this is what is to be desired it's more to be desired are they are they than gold are they who are they these are they okay Provo these are these women they are to more they are more to be desired than gold right proverbs 6 24 pleasant words are as honeycomb sweet to the soul and heal health to the bones that is a healing they have a healing power it's christ's healing power and this next one sounds a little bit like a command proverbs 24 13 my son you see he's speaking to the boys my son Eat thou honey because it is good and thou honeycomb which is sweet to thy taste. And now the milk. Why she is the ticket to the land of milk and honey. 
Exodus 3.18, And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Okay? Now the garments smell like a natural, unintoxicated state of the overly poisoned human lymphatic system. His cleansing of her temple took away all the many poisons that have built up in them that have built up lymphatically and now she's giving her pure unencumbered spiritual signature scent the true pheromones have been released song 412 a garden encloses my sister my spouse a spring shut up a fountain sealed yes she is enclosed and shut up because she is locked until the Adam bearing the key of David given unto him by the Lord at his appointed time is the only matching pheromonal signature and voice command that can open her up she is a scroll. Songs 4.13. Thy plants are an orchid of pomegranates with pleasant fruits, campfire with spikenard. Following through 14. Spikenard and saffron, calamus and cinnamon, with all trees of frankincense, myrrh and aloes, with all the chief spices. At another time, in another video, I will go through all these spices and fragrant oils to reveal the hidden manner in them. But for now, what I have previously said will suffice. Sun 415, a fountain of gardens of well of living waters and streams from Lebanon. The women are the wells of living waters. Women were always water bearers. The women always drew the water. Look from, you can go from Genesis all the way to Revelation and it was always women who drew the water. The men were too good for that job, to be honest with you. That's the truth. The men were, were too good for it, okay? So. Sun 416, awake, O north wind, and come thou south. Blow upon my garden, that the spices thereof may flow out. Let my beloved come into his garden, and eat his pleasant fruit. Now she is ready and made clean. The Lord sends out a voice command to awake Adam to the north wind, that he is, he is to become the head of this maiden who has been made ready. He must come from the north, which is up in spirit, and head down south and the spirit and the flesh Adam must synchronize and become one as woman has already done so she's already she's already become one with her spirit Adam which is the Christed spirit right she's already become one with that she's already done that bond. she's already done that process now he's being invited to come into this process and do it so that he can come to her blow your breath of life for now this Adam will truly be born again of the spirit and now having his body of immortality or body of imperishability can go breathe life into her garden her womb that has been shut up and eat his his not anyone else's his pleasant fruit one man one woman as it was in the garden of eden i will continue shortly thank you brothers and sisters for listening